We have another episode today of the Black and White. Today we are here with Miss Kamisha. How you doing today? I'm good. You? I'm pretty good. Um, so let's kind of get into it. So where are you from? I'm originally from Somerville. In around eighth grade, I moved to Rome, Georgia. So how was growing up and like for your childhood days? How was sort of like the growing up part of it? I had a pretty good childhood, you know, like a lot of people, single parent at home. Um, my mom, she started training me early to sing. So that's how I can remember doing growing up. I used to drawing and singing was what I've always done. Okay, okay. So you was introduced to music like at a young age, like real young, huh? Yes, my mom, she sings, she was in a gospel group when I was growing up. Her mama, like my aunts, they still sing. Well, my grandma has passed, but my aunts, they still sing on my dad's side. My granddaddy was a preacher. He had a group, my aunt. So every, not everybody, but a lot of people in my family are known for singing. Okay. So like, how did you come to like the realization that music was going to be for you? I guess because it's always something that I've known. I remember when I was younger, my mom, that's something because that's what she loved to do. And my mom had me like three days before her 15th birthday. So she used to always sing. And once she was pregnant with me, she, you know, like back then, it's not cool now, back then, you know, it wasn't cool. So she was um, got kicked out of like all the singing stuff she was in. So that's something that she kind of molded me into doing because I remember when I was younger, I didn't want to sing like I was so shy and my mama that's something she kind of pressured me into doing at one point and so I just end up living it okay so quick question like if you wasn't doing music like what would you be probably doing right now um my business is called the female plug and the name comes from you know like in the urban community the plug is somebody who has everything yeah, for good price yeah. So I do logos, websites, stuff like that. So I've always, like, if you gave me a picture, I could draw it. Like, I've always been into art. So if I went singing, I would be doing my business, like, what I'm doing. Okay, okay, okay. Entrepreneur vibes on your business. Um, so during the pandemic, like, was it, was you able to still function and move around as far as musically getting stuff out there through the internet and stuff like that? Um, well, during the pandemic, okay, so back in 2009, I was paralyzed. I have an autoimmune disorder, so one day I was walking, the next month I wouldn't. So for years, I would always, like, sing videos, like, do request videos. People would ask me to sing on my YouTube page. And so for a minute, I stopped singing, just learning to walk again. I became a mother, stuff like that. So during the pandemic, I focused on my business for the most part. And then once I kind of got that up and moving, singing is something that I guess because it's always been my first love and my passion. Mm-hmm. One, somebody came into my life and they was like, why you don't have a studio? And they started buying me like piece by piece. And so when I got a studio in my house, I just started recording. Like if I felt a certain kind of way, I record. So the music is something that I'm just now like really getting back into. Okay. Okay. I mean, you know. Just like when you first learn how to ride a bike, you take a break and you're going to get right back to and it. And it, it's different because <laughs> when I used to sing a long time ago, like they had they had social media, but it wasn't like it is now, you know. Definitely. So um, in November, I got my first song. It's called Real Bad on all platforms. So now it's just like I'm kind of getting back in the hang of everything. Okay, okay. Um, I know you talked about uh, singing like younger. So like were you singing, I guess, career-wise? at a younger age, or this is kind of where you at now, where you're, like, pursuing the career of it? Mm -mm, I've always sang, like, I've been, back in the day, like, studio, I did my first, I recorded my first song, like, at 11. Okay. And then in Rome, I started as a hook singer for this group called Threads, (laughs) and I used to sing their hooks, and then I went to a label called Pine Funk, and that's when I recorded my first song. So that was at 15, and then at 19, I moved to Albany, Georgia, and that's when I, like, pursued my music, where I was opening up for people, songs on the radio. So it, like, I've always been, I've always sang. And then that's all that I did. So 
when you heard your um like do you remember that moment you heard your song on the radio for the first time oh yeah <laughs> me and my mom was in the car and it came on and both of us were just screaming we were so excited and see back in our beginning it um there they had a football team where we had i had a song with it's a man called oe and dj tremaine and the song used to be like they played them during the football games. I remember one time I was in a store, and that's when they had, like, the ringtones. I heard my song on the ringtone. So it's a good feeling. And now to come back to this moment, like, when I go places at a get-together, something like people singing my songs, doing my songs. So it's, it's, it's just a good feeling to know that people love what you do. Oh, uh, yeah. So um, who are some of, like, your, your musical influences? I love Monica. Monica is my favorite person. Like, I think outside music and like personal, I just, I love Monica. But group wise, I would say The Emotions, uh, Escape, SWV. I like Brandy. It, I love R&B. Like, I'm a true R&B person. If you hear my songs, they like R&B. Okay, okay. Um, so, that's your influence. So, like, top five alive or dead or past, like, who is your top five on that pedestal? Like, if you have to pick your top five R&B artists that you just... Oh, top five that comes to my head that, like, vocally, vocal-wise? However you want to categorize it. And they got to be a certain order. It's just, like, your top five favorite people. Like, you uh, got, these are my five. Like, Well, I'm Monica not. and 50 Cent. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I love 50 Cent. Like, I love 50 Cent. But Monica, 50 Cent. Um, I love Fantasia. I like, oh, that's so hard. Brandy and Coco from SWV. Like, Coco is my favorite, even though she ain't. I know I miss some people, but. <laughs> no, ain't no wrong answer. That's true. So, but I love Monica. So, you know, Monica, you seem like you're the one. <laughs> <laughs> um, so right now, who who's in that? Who's in the playlist? Like who's who is getting that Spotify Apple playlist right now? Who getting them streams from you right now in the car? Um, right now I've been I have like a mixture of so in the morning times I like to listen to my gospel. So my favorite gospel is right, Mary Mary, and I love Pastor Mike. Okay. Oh, I love him. That's when I need to have, you know, feel the word and stuff. Um, it's ratchet, but I like Glorilla. <laughs> like, when I need my, you know. And R&B-wise, I have this 90 playlist, and it just a uh, different kind of 90s, like early 2000 R&B. Okay, okay. Yeah, I definitely like to see what everybody riding to, you know. Everybody got different vibes. I definitely wasn't expecting Glorilla. <laughs> <laughs> hey. You know, I don't, I like, I like confident people, but it's just something about her songs that make you feel like, you know. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> so, um, and your musical journey, like who is, like you, cause you, you said you opened up with some of your, like some of the bigger artists. So who is like some of your favorite show openers that you've been able to open up on your journey? Um, back in the day, I would say life because like um, Jennings. Mm -hmm. Sorry about that. Just have to make sure. Oh uh, yeah, because <laughs> it was at that time when I opened up for him. He wanted me to do like an audition to do his background singing and stuff like that. Okay. So I really enjoyed those moments. I love Trina, so I enjoyed like opening up for her. Bumby. I just enjoyed performing. You know. Definitely. Definitely. Um. So, I guess, in what ways, like, um, in what way do you aim to make, like, a difference? Like, what do you bring different to the table, like, your style-wise? What do you think, like, you bring different to the game? Music? Yeah. Um, I'm just authentic, and I can really sing. <laughs> you know, like, I can sing, and a lot of times... I do I do it because I love doing it. It's not because I, I have to do it. So it's a difference. And because I've been through so much as far as like being paralyzed, the doctor said I wouldn't walk or have a child. And I had, you know what I mean? I've overcome so much. 
I just want to be the person to inspire people. Like, no matter what you go through, you know what I mean? Keep going, follow your dreams, stuff like that. So I'm a person that put out positive energy. And so that's what I want in my music. Like, the song, Real Bad, you know, it's kind of like a little up-tempo love song. And the second single, it is. And even though I have some of those songs, like Summer Walker, you know, the male bashing kind of song, uh-huh. I ain't really feeling that. Like, I'm just feeling love in this current moment, you know? Okay, okay. Um, let me see. If you could perform, like, anywhere in the world, like, we just snapped the finger and you there, what, what would you probably want to perform at? I never thought about that. Where would <laughs> I want to perform? I don't know specifically where I want to perform, but if I could go on tour or open up for Monica, we're going to speak <laughs> that. That's what I would do. I would be opening up for Monica, like, wherever she is touring, that's where I would be. Okay, Monica. You, you heard what she said. For <laughs> you, you, she will. For you, she will. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, like, where do you see your career headed, like, in the next five years? Like small term go. Um, so when, like I said, this time with my music, it was different because I was able to be, you know, what I mean, see people share my music on all platforms, and it just came out and it's reached like over eighty cities all over, Cayman Islands, Mexico. Like the song is doing good. So within five years, I want to continue to just, I, I want to be stay independent. You know, okay. and just be able to grow my following and my business. You know, just keep going. Just allowing God to lead me. That's because you know we always make plans and it don't go our way. So just however, keep doing what I love to do. Oh yeah, that definitely makes sense. That definitely makes sense. Um, if you could speak to like the artist that's coming up under you, you know what I'm saying? Like, what would be some things you would like tell them to be at? Like, uh, let me read through that. If you had like some artists that was coming up under you and they asked you for some advice, what what kind of advice would you give them as far as like the musical journey, what they expect, you know what I'm saying, what's to come? I would say know your worth for the most part because when you don't know your worth, you sometimes do stuff that you probably don't, you shouldn't do. So know your worth and just stay true to yourself. You know, because a lot of times when you get in the music industry, people want to change you. Just stay true to who you are. Definitely, man. And know the business. Don't be gullible and, and listen to anybody, honey. Fat chick and all the time. Because people lie. <laughs> um, what are you currently working on at the moment? Um, Right now, like I said, I'm pushing real bad. That's the single that just came out in November. So I'm working on that, just pushing that in the female plus, just growing my business. I think this year I said that the word was discipline, like, and I, I got that. So I said 2023, my word would be consistency. So just trying to be consistent, you know, with what, growing my business and just my music. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Um, so currently, are you working on any projects? Do you have, like, or what can they expect from you, like, going into 2023? Um, Know that if you need custom shirts, logos, all that, I got you on it. But as far as my music, um, you can get real bad on Apple Music, Spotify, Pandora. It's, it's on all the platforms. And my EP, which is going to be seven songs, I'm going to have it. It's the date, June 10th. Because that's the, that'll be my seventh year anniversary for the female plugs. And since it's, you know what I mean, Miss Kamisha like makes up all of that, I want to do that in the same year. So I'm coming out with my second single around like February. Okay. And then um, my uncle just passed back in August, and me and my mom did a song, and I'm hoping my brother rap on it, but we did a song, and his birthday's in March, so we're supposed to be doing a tribute to him. But other than that, just pushing my music, getting ready for my EP release in June. Okay, okay. Um, so yeah, like it was definitely great having a conversation with you. Yes. Great talking. Um, before we get up out of here, um, 
this is your moment to plug whatever you have, your social medias, your Apple Music, your YouTube, anything you want to plug or get out to the world. This is your time. You got the flow. Take as much time as you need. Okay, so if, um, not if, go check out Real Bad and MS Miss Kamisha, K A M E S H A. Miss Kamisha, you can type it in YouTube. It, it's going to be Miss Kamisha, the female plug. But that's where you can get like all my old videos, updates. Um, my Instagram is at Miss Kamisha and also at the female plugs, T H E F E M A L E. P L U G S, and that's where you're going to find me on Facebook and Instagram, is where and YouTube is where I'm at the most. TikTok, um, the female plugs, too. So that's where you can find me. So there you have it the black and white Miss Kamisha. It's been real. <laughs> Let's go. Movie. You know it's a movie. If we next up films, shot it.